the screwballs, it seems to me, opened up an era of kind of liberal left questioning of American values. They were proto-feminist films. Screwball, people think, is yeah, might mean screwy or something. Actually, the term comes from um, uh, baseball, uh, um, as some of you may know. It, it's the equivalent of a, a spin board in cricket. And, and it refers to the unexpected trajectory of the storyline, you know, the things ricochet in unexpected, almost surreal ways. And I would argue that you only really got proper screwball comedies um, between 1934 and, at a stretch, 1942 about an eight-year period in Hollywood history. A kind of Great Depression kind of period. It, yeah, I think, the I think this is the crucial thing. They were, they were movies that were made, I think, in the middle of a kind of a, a Hollywood crisis. You know, a young Hollywood had been churning out entertainment, you know, escapist entertainment, uh, to America, and suddenly the Depression comes along in 1929. I think it's a crisis for them. You know, what, what do we do? Do we carry on as though it's not happening? Um, and I think the screwball comedies are an attempt to try and balance important social drama about what's going on while maintaining something of that kind of escapist romantic comedy. So I can think of just one British movie, and that's about it, that, that you could more or less say is kind of screwball. Which one is that? Uh, and I think that's Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger's I Know Where I'm Going. That, ha that tends to have all those elements, except in a kind of... I in fact, I Know Where I'm Going is a kind of Scottish Highlands remake of It Happened One Night. Yeah. Um, and, and it's a wonderful movie. But, but that, that's, that, to me, comes closest... That's your to one exception on that rule. It, it, I, it still isn't quite screwable, cause it's th but it it's comes very close to the ingredients, for me, that, that you have to have to have screwable. Um, you know, for me... Screwballs don't have to be ha 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 funny, you know, but they have to be comedic. Um, they, they, so, you know, Marx Brothers is not screwball. Eden comedies are not screwball. They have to have this romantic element. They have to have the social element. They have to have them, the, the man and the woman, failing to come together for most of the film. I, I mean, and that leads me actually onto a very nicely onto my next question, really, which is in terms of your own career and your own novels where perhaps a screwball could fit in. I'm thinking about, like, for example, Remains the Day, which w has that, sort of that social divide. And, and obviously you know, sort of the fact that uh, there is a theme in some of your novels about the, sort of the two lovers being kept apart for a lot of the, the time, if not all the time. Yeah. Well, l love stories in general, um, well, whether I'm thinking of writing, uh, when I'm trying to write a love story, or if I'm watching a love story or reading a love story, the question that always comes to my mind is you know, what keeps the two lovers apart? Um, I think for me that's the crucial question in, in a love story or any story that has a strong love element in it. If you have in a story fairly superficial shadow things keeping the lovers apart, you're, the chances are you end up with a superficial and shadow story. <coughs> yeah. It will still work. If, if lovers are kept apart because of silly coincidences and you know, unfortunate misunderstandings, it will still work at a mechanical level, but it won't be a... You're not going to get very profound. So if you put very interesting, deep, subtle, profound obstacles in between the two lovers, and they could be societal obstacles or they could be internal to the characters, um, that, that's what makes the difference between a love story that is... You know, just mechanically okay and works. And something that isn't just a love story becomes about something much bigger and much more profound. And so obviously you can put things like war in between a couple, you know, or in Casablanca, duty, or something like this, um, or terminal illness, or you know, racial segregation. But if you're working in the romantic comedy genre or the screwball genre, th those kinds of things aren't, Appropriate. Often they're not appropriate. I've never seen a successful screwball comedy with about terminal illness. Or, um, <laughs> and so, so the, the challenge is quite big for the, for someone working in this area, you know, in, in this territory. You have to you have to find quite subtle things, you know, but really profound, deep emotional things that 
that keep the lovers apart to form your story. And I think Holiday is an example, I think, of, uh, you know, it's, it's a really interesting group of things that, that, that keep the lovers apart, both internal things and societal things. Uh, and many of the best um, screwball comedies do this, I think. This is one of the great paradoxes that as, you know, as feminism made tremendous progress over the decades, Hollywood films are producing female characters that are shallower and shallower <laughs> and more and more nominal. Um, you look at screwballs and many of the other films made in the 30s, the, the female characters are very complex and substantial. And, and as a genre, I would say the, the, the male lead is almost like a foil. The story tends to be about a, a woman who is often pushing against the boundaries or actually transgressing the boundaries of the society at the time. They may be heiresses, they may be showgirls, uh, they could, they, you know, they're secretaries, they could be all kinds of people, but that, that is the characteristic. Um, and so it tends to be about a, a woman's journey. When the depression ends, you get Philadelphia story. It's a reasserting of conservative values and, and very kind of male patriarchal v values. Yeah. Um, and that's, uh, that to me is what the Philadel what ph ph Philadelphia story is. I, I don't understand why the same team could come up with this. <laughs> Ironically, the whole thing was engineered by Hepburn herself. Um, she commissioned the play. She commissioned the film. She chose the the, the actors. Uh, she, uh, she chose Cary Grant and she chose George Cooker. I mean, she, she was the powerful f figure uh, behind the whole thing. Um, but it comes out as a, I mean, I'm, I'm sure many of you are more familiar with um, the Philadelphia story. But uh, I mean, I think it's a horrible film. <laughs> I think uh, I th it's a really <laughs> nasty piece of work. <laughs>